Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you another delightful um, collection of new products. Um, you may recognise this beautiful DSP. It is the Share What You Love DSP. Um, and before I carry on, I'm going to explain to you that I have a little dog wandering around, keep complaining at me because it's getting very close to biscuit time, um, their tea time, um, and she keeps complaining at me. But as we all know, we have work to do, so she's going to have to wait. She's not starving, um, and it's at least an hour before she should have them. So I apologise if you hear a whinge. Um, so yes, yeah, so we have the beautiful... Daisy, do you mind? So we have the lovely Show What You Love DSP and then we have this gorgeous, um, delightfully detailed laser cut. Now let me get this right because it's not called laser cut DSP. It is called, very quickly find it. Oh, it's just called laser cut speciality paper. But it, in my mind it's DSP. So. So yeah, so as you can see, I've layered it here with very vanilla and rich razzleberry and then just decorated it slightly. Um, but I think it would make a great gift box. It's, it's a good size. It is one and three quarter inches deep by four inches. So it is a good size. Um, it's got a cute little handle on the top. So um, yeah, I think this is really cute. And I think that this would be a great little gift for someone. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to make it. So obviously you're going to need your scoring board and you will need a sheet of DSP. Now I'm going with the Share What You Love Sweet again um, and you'll need a sheet of DSP that is 7 and a quarter inches by 12 and that's 19 centimetres by 30.5. Um, but obviously I, I will only assume that you still get 12 by 12 sheets of DSP so you just need to cut it at 19 um, centimetres. Don't forget if you've got pattern to make sure it's going the way you want it. Um, so this is the way that my box or my bag will sit. Um, and so I want to score along this long side at four, five and three quarters, nine and three quarters and eleven and a half inches. So that's ten, fourteen and a half, twenty four and a half and twenty nine centimetres. And then we're going to rotate and we're going to score again at one and three quarters, which is four and a half centimetres. And that's all we need to do with that bit. Push all that out of the way. Then, as you know, we're going to fold and burnish these score lines. And I know it's a shame that I'm hiding this pearlized bit, but it just didn't fit with what I wanted to do. Hmm, can't even see my score lines. I clearly didn't do these very well, did I? I really can hardly see them. There's another one. Pons. Make sure you score well enough, guys. I suspect it's because this DSP is quite thick, um, and so it clearly hasn't shown up that well. So there we have it, our lovely bag. And as you know, we're going to cut away this little corner here, just a little wedge in there, and then cut up the bottom bits here, which will be our base of our bag. They're so basic, these bags are, they're so easy to make, but I just think that the, the whole exciting part is in the decorating of them. So before we do any more, I want to make my panel because I want to be able to stick it on while my bag's flat because it's going to make it that little bit easier. So for now, we're going to pop that to one side. So in comes my layers. So I have my very vanilla, which I've cut to be five and a quarter by three and three quarters, which is 14 by nine and a half. And it fits just, if I bend that down, it fits just on the bag so that you just have this small border. So that's the largest. I then went down by one eighth. Again, <clears throat> with centimetres, you'll have to sort of play around with it yourself. So I only went down with it by one eighth. And obviously you can see I'm using a beautiful returning mint macaron. And then I have a laser cut piece of paper here that is going to layer just on 
the top there. Now I've noticed on this one that this bottom bit is tiny bit thicker so I'm going to give that a trim but before I do that I want to give you my top tip and you probably noticed then that I pulled this out of one of my cellophane bags that I put my ready-made cards in. A lot of people um, have been sort of umming and ahhing about this beautiful paper. Now if I take these ones out you can see and I hope you're going to appreciate me not taking these out because they are a nightmare but you will be able to see along let me move these out in fact I can take these out but I'm not going to take my next sheet out so if I can just grab it so as you can see we have this beautiful laser cut special oh my goodness speciality paper and as you can see it is it comes not in these I've used these these are the um, project not project, memories and more big um, 12 by 12 covers and they're perfect for storing my DSP um, I have all my DSP in one in each one um, so yeah so as you can see I'm hoping you can see through the tissue paper let me lay it down so you've got this band here so I can actually put these over the top to give you an idea so when you cut want to cut yours what you need to do is trim this banner off the bottom first then you trim this side bit down off here and so you're left with this these six pieces which if I can try and just very quickly lay them on I've got two of those so where's the one I'm using and there's that one so you've got six squares then that you can just trim down now obviously once you then separate them as you can see these are so delicate that they get hooked up on everything as you saw me doing with the tissue paper so I decided that to prevent that happening once I've cut leave one layer if you don't need to use it leave it with in between the tissue paper so as you can see I've got one two three oh and then we have I'm hoping you can see that I don't want to get it out and I'm sure you'll appreciate why beautiful large sheets and I think we have three of those stunning large sheets as well um, they just catch and they are a pain um, so I just thought once I've cut them put them in these clear cellophane bags and then you can just stack them all together back in front of that tissue paper and they're all there and then you can pick and choose without them getting spoiled let me just I'm going to just pop these to one side for now because it will take me a little while to put these back in without them getting caught up but again as you can see these are all borders I mean you could even go with using the outsides as well you know but they're all oh, just beautiful I just love it I can't wait to play with this some more but I'm going to put that out of the way and get back onto my project so layering so I've got this here now this is going to be a bit of a nuisance to stick down because of the pattern so let's first off let's just adhere my mint macaron layer onto my vanilla because I wanted to give that one a small trim anyway so that's that I'm not going to cut it down actually because my trimmer is actually oh stab myself with my scissors my trimmer is actually being used to hold my tripod up because I'm still yes after all this time I'm still having issues with my tripod so I have to just wedge it now so I have a stack of catalogues to my left and I have my sponge box with all my sponges and my daubers in then my trimmer and then my envelope punch board literally up against the wall wedging it it's quite amusing really so yes yeah, so when we want to adhere this that's better the only thing I can suggest is either using wet glue and running it round the edge which I'm going to do or which is the only thing that I didn't get out you can use your fine tip glue pen 
or you can use glue dots on the larger, let me turn it that way, and again you've got white and vanilla, use glue dots on the larger pieces just to keep them stuck down. But I'm going to go with this. Let's try it. I haven't used this yet. The previous, the one on the previous bag, this one, I just used um, snail in the corners and it works absolutely fine. Um, so for this one, I'm just going to run a very fine all the way round the edges. Oops, that was a bit too much on that bit. Trying to keep, and, and I can't do two things at once, hence you'll notice I'm not talking when I'm trying to do this. Gluing in a straight line, because if I talk as well it's going to go wrong. I know those women are supposed to be good at multitasking, but just sometimes you need concentration. So, I've put wet glue on four sides, and then obviously you need to try and place this in the right place because you don't want to be moving it around. There we go, I'm quite happy with that now. So I'm just a bit of glue coming out there. So okay, it could have been a shimmy to the left but we'll, we'll deal with that. So that's that bit done. So to just add, and I don't think that I'm going to need to put ribbon on this because I think that Mm, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how I feel in a minute. Right, so, so next up then we need our Detailed with Love, which is the coordinating stamp set. Um, I'm going to use this one again just because it's going to help me hold this in place because it's quite a large sentiment in the centre there. So, I'm just going to pop this down here and grab my mint ink and just simply stamp it on to here. That will lighten in a moment. Move that out of the way. Let's just give that a little clean. Move that out of the way. And then I've got my layering ovals here that sadly have all fallen out of their position. And look at that, that was pure luck wasn't it? Not really because it was the last time I used them. So um, we're just going to die cut this, as I said, with the layering ovals. And just line that up. And obviously if you were using the white side then I suspect you would use the Whisper White cardstock as your base here. So let's get that out of the way. So there's my die cut, move those out of the way. So let's have a little look see now. I'm still going to pop my dimensionals on here because I'm still going to need them on there anyway. So, whoops. I quite like that and this is where you'll sort of have a bit of a, a play around. Quite like that. Does it need that? Oh, I'm sure I can hear you all. Some of you saying yes, some of you saying no. Do you know what? I'm going to leave it plain. Let's just leave it plain because I quite like it. So I'm going to... Oh heavens. This is what I mean about it being delicate, you see? Catch a bit and it just pulls. So backing's off my dimensionals. I do apologise, I've got a sneeze coming too. <laughs> oh bless me, sorry about that. I dreaded hay fever, I'm afraid, even though I've had tablets. So, there's my sentiment on. Obviously, if you were putting your um, ribbon on, you'd pop it behind there with some... Well, I use tear and tape. Um, and I think I am just going to stick with putting a small bow on the bottom, I think. Just because I want to do a fiddly bow on the camera and watch it go horribly wrong. Wow, look at that. That isn't far off, I don't think. All right, let's trim these ends here. And then I just need a glue dot. And I want to fold 
my glue dot in half and then a quarter and I'm just going to pop it on the bottom there and then just sit my little bow on the top I like that and then I've just got some pearls here these are the medium sized ones and I'm just going to pop them on the top Oops. I'm just going to pull this down so I can line it up yes and then obviously we need to stick this onto our bag now you can use snail tear and tape fuse if you still have any whichever you prefer and then just make sure you know where your creases are and then pop your card front on I like that and then we just need to put our bag together so we need to run some adhesive round down the tab so let's just fold these over and that's that bit done and then as you know we put in our two sides the back and then the oops fighting with my fuse the last bit is the front panel that goes down I just get my bone folder in there just to press that glue down and then finally we need our handle and my handle is 12 inches by one now this is slightly thinner and I'll be totally honest with you it was a bit of a cut off and I thought I am not cutting a new sheet just for this when this is a fraction smaller so that's what we went with so I'm sorry so my handle is 12 by 1 12 inches by 1 inches and that is 30.5 by 2 centimeters and then just to pop my handle in place I used my grid paper and I line my end up it doesn't really matter where but I generally go with a deering one and a half inches and the reason for this is just so that I make sure that when it comes to it my handles even and it looks good and you can see then where your adhesive is eyeball the centre of your box here or you could measure it and then just stick it down and you can see you can see my adhesive shining there so I know where my adhesive uh, where my handle needs to sit and there we have it a really cute and gorgeous and delicate gift bag that I would love to put some goodies in to give to someone I hope you liked my project I hope you're looking forward to getting all these new goodies don't forget if you want a catalogue to get in touch with me um, I have had people sending me emails I have packaged some up today I have a few more left to do um, by all means contact me and let me know and I will get them out to you I can only send to France Germany Austria and the Netherlands and obviously the UK um, if you live in any other countries that um, has stamping up demonstrators then sadly you need to find your own um, if you're not sure of who to contact then by all means contact me and I will do my best to help you out. Hope you all have a great day and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye!